I apologize for that. Nick actually read my speech. I'm not sure what to say at this point. Nick, thank you. Uh, he's been an incredible collaborator and friend uh, and partner in this educational uh, endeavor for so many years. I am so blessed to, to work uh, with Nick and his entire family. Uh, welcome. What an incredible community. I look at as I watched every, this is not in the script, of course. I, I watched everybody coming in and friends and colleagues and students and former students and alumni and leaders in the community and tri-school. What an incredible community. Uh, it does mark uh, my 28th year at Sarah. Uh, and yes, it was. <laughs> Thank you. And, and yes, it, it will be my last. Uh, but as you know, no one ever leaves the Sarah community, right? It's once a padre, always a padre, and that really impacts all of us in, in, in so many ways. It's simply an incredible school. And I have such deep gratitude for what we, for what we have accomplished as a community over these last number, last number of years. So humbled to be here, and it's really about transforming the lives of these young men. Now, I have to laugh as I say this because I truly did not know the power of the Sarah community when I arrived here almost three de decades ago. And I look at Mike Peterson, he's heard this story a, a number of times when he and Mr. Lars Lund and, and Father Steve Howe, former presidents, hired me with no background in education. I did not deserve to be hired, so thank you uh, for taking a chance uh, uh, on me. And that Honest to God, that first year of teaching was the hardest thing I had ever done in my life. And I gave a, a survey at the end of the year, and I was expecting some critique and uh, hopefully maybe a little bit of affirmation, if I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to read to you what one of the uh, students said that was very moving to me. It's by Neil Akaria. He sat right in the front and stared at me all days long. And this is, this is what he wrote. Your shoes are ugly, man. You need a new pair of shoes. I felt good about my life choices at that moment. Um, it's all about transforming lives. I received another series of, uh, oh, I should say, Neil is now the Director of Operations at the US Army Space Command. Uh, I'm just happy I contributed to that pathway. I received another set of comments as well uh, these were a little bit different, and it said essentially, and there were a lot of them, that, hey, you're a nice guy, you're working hard, we appreciate it, but things did get a little too rowdy in here. They really said that. And I'll never forget it, it was not a compliment. Uh, I hadn't created an environment that was safe for them, and I knew it, and I wasn't a very good teacher yet, right? I had a lot to learn. And so it was over the next five years and the next 23 years or 28 years that I really learned really a lot about truly what boys need. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's really there. It's these super high expectations, but support, right? They need rules, but they need kindness in, in their application. They need super smart, talented teachers, but they need to have a relationship with them right? They need a relationship. They need to explore and try new things, but they needed people to walk with them when they failed. They needed to develop their independence and identity, but they needed a community in which to bounce that off, a loving community. They really need love. They needed a community of love. And so over time, I came to understand this, to embrace it, to advocate for this tremendous vision that we are building an educational community that's a partnership of parents and educators that truly does transform lives. That's not just words that, that we use that really makes a difference for the good in the world. And we've defined that, as you've heard a thousand times, the Padre Brotherhood, respect, integrity, inclusion, and compassion. And it's so powerfully real. That vision is everything. I remember Eddie Lindo, uh, for those of you who may remember him, class of 2006, helped me understand that vision. He was one of our early fund to dream speakers. And he had received massive financial aid, had come down from San, San Francisco every day on the bus, just graduated from UOP, the first in, college, in his, his uh, family to graduate from college. And he started his speech and he said, he looked out and he said, thank you. I know that all of you contributed to my education. Now I want you to see the return on your investment. I loved it, right? I loved it. The ROI was Eddie. 
It was a person. It wasn't a building. It wasn't a program. It wasn't a thing. Eddie was the return on the investment. And that was so powerful for me. And this understanding of the ROI, I think, became even more clear in the pandemic five years ago with Nick and the Board of Regents and so many in this community. We started this tremendous effort towards a vision for Sarah that would chart the future. We gathered the world, man. We get six months in preparation, board members, family members, not family, sorry, you guys weren't involved. Um, board members, uh, alumni, teachers, students, so many people involved. And we kicked that vision and that whole event off on January 30th, 2020. Timing's everything, right? Timing's everything. The world blows up. Six weeks later, we forged ahead rem remotely. And then we gathered with the board in person 18 months later, and there were two things that we went to approve. One was this incredible mission, this vision for Catholic education that was focused on mission, focused on academic excellence to make it just a premier academic school in, in the entire region, and third, institutional strength that would focus on the buildings, enrollment, finances, all these pieces. And then secondly, this ridiculously large capital campaign of $38 million. <laughs> Benet's laughing like, are you kidding me, right? How would we raise that much money? So $38 million that, that we would be able to achieve. And so the board looked at that and said, yes, we need to do that. We're ready to go, but... And then there was this pause, and, and there was this intense discussion that was almost bordering on scolding me. And they said, listen, it is not about shiny buildings and fancy programs. What has happened in the last two years and the last so many years is our sons, these boys, their lives have been transformed. And secondly, it's the community that supported them that transformed those lives. And I think when we think back to that time, Community had truly been shattered, and it's at that point when you really have an understanding of what community is all about. And so when we talk about that at Sarah, we have a vision of building a community where the ROI is the individual young men themselves, the lives that they lead, but it's also the community that forms them. And this is the key point. The individual always contributes to that community, and the community forms the individual. And the dynamic that occurs there, particularly when it's done in a dynamic of faith and love, that's the culture that teaches. That's the transformational nature. Now, this happens every day in all aspects of, of the Sarah community. Recently, we put on a play, Lord of the Flies. It's an awesome play for a boys' school. Awesome play for a boys' school. And... I went up to the to the to the lead, Paul Mansfield, to congratulate him. Paul, great job. And he played one of the most despicable characters in the entire play. And he said, Was I horrible, Dr. Thornton? Was I horrible? I said, Yes, you were a scumbag. You were horrible. And he said, Thank you for the compliment. And they said, if you really, if you really uh, want to understand, they said, Mr. Long, who is our who is our director, play director, he said, if you really want to understand this role, you need to be the opposite of a padre. I just love that statement. So I went to Mr. Long and I asked him, what does it mean to be the opposite of the Padre? And he said, well, everything that we do here is about developing community, developing this community that's creating a culture of respect, of love and integrity. That's what we teach. And when you understand Lord of the Flies, you see that the power is used to the self, that you build up yourself at the expense of the other. And that's everything opposite of what we teach. So if you really want to understand this role, Paul, be the opposite of a Padre. And what I love about Paul is he's getting an outstanding education. He was, a, he was a, a valedictorian for our class. He is second to none. But more importantly, he was learning what it meant to be a man. He was learning what it meant to be a padre. He was learning what it meant to be a brother. And I think that's what happens every single day at Sarah with the administrators, the teachers, the counselors, the coaches that are teaching. The ROI of Sarah is a community where the ideal of manhood is not about tearing down, demonizing, or hatred, is not about discrimination or oppression, but what power is used to love, to serve, and it's shown ultimately in that powerful image of manhood where Jesus kneels to wash the feet of Peter. So there's a place that nurtures dreams in the human spirit. 
we recently inaugurated this awesome program where it's called Global Leadership, where students can concentrate in an area of study focused on service, share their projects with the international audience. We've made connections with schools in South Africa and Colombia, the Philippines, Japan. The program broadens their understandings of culture, nurtures their minds, centers them on mission. Their only limit is their imagination. And one of our projects, Sarah student, Zach Serzik, class of 24, who's back there, big shout for Zach, wanted to help senior citizens have experiences using virtual reality. So in a moment, you will see this lady who is scuba diving for the very first time. It turns out that three months before, she had lost her husband. She had always, lo had always loved to scuba dive and she had been afraid to try it. And now she has the opportunity. This is Sarah student from Creative Solutions, learning what he's capable of making happen for others in innovative service. Thank you. We need young men who know it's okay to fail and be human and make mistakes. One of our students was caught cheating on a final exam. Only happened one time. Thank you, chat GPT. It was brutal for everybody. Later that week, I actually was with him on, on Kairos. Kairos is an awesome retreat where, where these young men get together for, for a full week. It was awful. He felt such shame. Um, and he literally went to every single adult in the room to apologize to him that night. He came up to me, and I finally looked at him. I said, welcome to the world of humanity, right? I love you. God loves you. You're forgiven. Stop beating up on yourself. And then take this moment of failure as an incredible moment of grace for growth as a young man where you have now clarified what your values are. You fell short of your own values. Now you know. What an opportunity for growth. He then went and went to, as we have an opportunity for confession for everybody that goes to Kairos, so he's able to be forgiven and move forward. What I love about this is that everybody that goes to Kairos I'm talking to our chaplains. They say that everyone goes to confession, which is fascinating because it's regardless of faith. We have Catholics and Jews and Protestants and Hindus and Muslims and people that don't know where they are in their faith. But everybody needs to face their humanity. Everybody needs to speak it. Everybody knows to need to know they're forgiven and to allow themselves to be forgiven. The ROI of Sarah, a community where young men can soar, where they can fail, where they can be forgiven, where they can be affirmed in their humanity, and where they can grow through those experiences to be tremendous men of compassion and of love. I, I think so often this, this has to begin with the teachers here in this room. During the pandemic, Sarah was the first high school in the region to go back to campus learning before the vaccine was available. The fear we know that time and, and that period but the teachers put their well-being of their students in front of their own safety. I will never forget that. And I look at these teachers every night, staying up, redoing lessons on Zoom every day for two years. Do you realize at that time period for those two years, we changed our schedule seven times to respond to the changing conditions in the environment. Every single time they adapted and every single time the parents rolled with them with a singular focus on what was best for these young men. Oftentimes, the students then have to, teachers even have to carry the students. We had our academic review board making one of the most difficult decisions in a long time to let a student go because academically he wasn't cutting it. Everybody loved him. But he wasn't doing what he needed. And that job fell to me to make that phone call. It's four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, and I've got the phone in my hand. And by six o'clock, I still hadn't made the call because I couldn't because I loved him. And we all did. But it's easy for me to say, I didn't have to teach him. We called the entire community together, all of his teachers, all of his coaches, all of his advisors on Monday. And I said, one more chance, only if 100% of you agree, because it's your responsibility. Nine months later, I met the student at the top of the stairs of St. Mary's. Sorry, I get emotional about this. <laughs> I handed him a Sarah diploma because his teachers walked beside him to help him to cross the finish line when he himself couldn't do it. 
the ROI of Sarah, a community in which teachers and coaches and counselors, they're the role models of sacrificial love that model what their parents are doing in sacrificial love. That is so powerful. They will not give up on their students, even if they give up on themselves. We have a community that shows profound compassion in times of grief. And we've heard their speakers tonight. Beginning of, of the school year of 2018 and one of the most painful experiences of the community. We received a call one morning that one of our students hadn't shown up at school. It was not long after that we heard that our senior, Blake Bonariti, had suffered a fatal car accident on the way to school. And in that moment, life changed for everyone. The community experienced that searing pain of loss of a fellow student and of a son. The entire upper division filled St. Pius Church. And at the end of the service, when everybody walked out, the students surrounded Blake's twin brother, Evan, and spontaneously said the Sarah School Prayer. In that group of 400 students, there were Catholics and Christians and Jews and Hindus and Muslims. There were atheists and agnostics and people that didn't know where they were. But they were padres and they loved their brother. And the witness of love that was so powerful that the only response to the abject pain and loss that we hear about in so many situations was to surround him, love him, pray for him, be with him, and walk the same walk we've done with so many family members. What's the ROI of that? It's men who understand compassion, who support those who are struggling, where they learn that suffering and death and loss does not have the last word because we walk with each other and find God's presence. Julie, we'll continue to walk with you and your family in support of the Blake Botterini Foundation. Katie and the Castricone family, we will support you. To Andy and Suzanne and the Leventhal family, we are with you. To the Kamenis family, we are with you. To the Fideli family, we are with you. To all who have lost, we continue to support you. You know, there have been a series of articles in the papers in the last couple of years variously entitled, What's wrong with boys? All detailing various real issues. The data's bleak. College declines seven times greater. Men are struggling in school. Men are struggling in the workplace. Men are having difficulty in friendships. The author is right. The culture is still searching for a modern masculine ideal. It's not instilling in many boys the nurturing and emotional skills that are so desperately needed today. It's not instilling in them a sense of confidence and competence. The critique is brutal. Skills learned and healthy functioning families, these are the skills that provide the relational, intellectual, and professional success. So I have an idea. Send them to Sarah. Send them to Sarah. We have not lowered our standards. We should actually raise them. This wonderful community of brothers provides the basis for academic excellence. We've actually raised our standards. AP scores average over 80% pass rate, exceeding state and national averages, 100% college attendance, $21 million in college scholarships over the last year. Every varsity athletic team is a CCS scholastic achievement team for 10 years running. We have built more, we have to build more science classrooms because we have run out of space in our new science building. Our professor of diseases, uh, a, a professor of diseases, a Harvard professor, Dr. Tara Mann, has exceeded enrollment. We can't offer enough sections. In the past five years, we've, we've expanded programs and offerings in drama, in the arts, we've expanded music, we've expanded AP offerings, we've added 20 electives covering business, innovation, the sciences, and the arts. We've developed a design-led innovation program, inaugurated a global leadership program. We've expanded our counseling to support students and their emotional needs. We've expanded our athletic training staff in support of our students and their growth. Our varsity football team won the NorCal championship again. Team GPA greater than 3.4. And in contrast to boys experiencing confidence, a loss of confidence and competence, 
At Sarah, while 40% of our freshmen begin an honors program, that number rises to over 60% by the time they graduate. Why? It demonstrates the growth of boys when they are challenged but nurtured in their environment. It's that laser focus on developing a community that drives student success is what has motivated us to work so hard on developing this physical plant, the institutional endowment, and all that we have done. Our alumni, family, and friends have driven our capital campaign, the goal of 38 million. We're now approaching 36 million to, of that campaign. We've added over 13 million to the endowment, built the Pereira Center for Robotics and Engineering. Thank you to Tammy Kiley uh, and your family in honor of your father, Manuel, who's here tonight. Remodeled multiple classrooms, added air conditioning, HVAC systems, completed the Simpson Center for Learning and Innovation on time and on budget. Every single project, because Sarah Padres are helping us manage it. We've invested over 25 million in the physical plant. We're not stopping there. Just this past week, we received approval from the archdiocese to develop the baseball field and put in an all-weather facility. A five million dollar project, which if if we get city approval on time, we will actually build this summer. We're ready to go with plans, contractor, and the money. So we'll be ready to roll. So I have an idea for a response to the challenge that young men are having. Let's develop a school community where we partner with parents, where academic standards are high, where students can be inspired by innovative programs and mentored by caring and expert teachers, where resilience and grit are taught normatively as part of the curriculum, where suffering has meaning, where hard work pays off, where students form deep relationships and a brotherhood centered on love, where students can fail, learn, be forgiven, where they can be sent to college ready with a sense of confidence and the knowledge that their gifts find meaning when they serve to another. I got an idea about a school that can do that. And what's the result? The ROI of a Sarah education? It's every single Sarah Padre in this room. It's a man, just like Eddie Lindo said. I think it's Hannah Mullick, class of 2008, regional CEO of the Red Cross who's responding to tragedy on a weekly basis. I think it's Antonio Maffi, class of 18, who held his NFL draft party at Sarah with his brothers and his community and began it in prayer. I think it's Paul Reagan and son Greg Reagan, classes of 64 and, and 91. Need my glass one, glasses for that, Paul, Greg. Uh, a, a legacy of three generations of Padres who are supporting Sarah and moving forward. I think it's Father Joe Bradley, in addition to Bishop Justice, who are helping us lead a community. I think it's Brian Morton, class of 83, entrepreneur, Sarah Advocate, and his sons, Brendan and Scott, all three of whom were the Padres, as Sarah Padres, and whose sons continue to lead as members of the Sarah board. I think. It is the 30 Sarah teachers and coaches and staff members who are alumni. Perry Carter, Chris Hool, John Grossi, Tom Sullivan, Kevin Carey, just to name a few, including Chuck Rapp, 18 out of 21 on the uh, Jungle Game, just, to, just saying. Just saying. Whose selfless talent are providing role models and the mentorship to the young man. I think it is Ken Stinson, class of 60, who in his tremendous success in philanthropy, funded the Stinson Center for Learning and Innovation. And in his speech, he started with, thank you. That's how he started his speech. The ROI of Sarah is every alumni who is living a virtue of life, a, a, a life of virtue and faith, I would like all alums to stand and be recognized. Every single one. Thank you. 
All those who stood, I want to talk to you about that extra $2 million we need for the capital campaign. I People often ask, what's the secret of Sarah? It's no secret. Sarah is a place that transforms lives. This is a community where boys are taught what it means to be a man. For the belief that God has called each man to greatness, nurtured in a brotherhood of love and respect, where all are valued, where they're called to their highest purpose, all races, all creeds, all beliefs, all socioeconomic groups, the academic, the artist, the athlete, the scientist, the electrician. It's where they find their highest gift and service to the community. This benefit flows to all. Students who could not attend Sarah if it was not for your generosity, it flows to your sons. Ultimately, it flows to our community. Whether or not you have a son at Sarah and whether or not your son has financial assistance. What a beautiful gift. What a beautiful gift Fund a Dream is to be able to invest in these young men in this incredible school, in our very own community, in our school. What a beautiful gift we are given. So as I prepare to pass the torch to my successor, I do so with the confidence knowing that we have achieved as a community and the incredible strength of this transformative Sarah community. I have been blessed. I have been blessed to play a role as teacher. I've been blessed to play a role of coach, as principal and president for the past three decades. And I am so deeply grateful to you, to each one of you, for allowing me, one, the honor to serve the mission of Sarah to work alongside every mom, every dad, every student, every mentor, every teacher, every coach, every supporter in this beautiful mission. I could receive no greater gift. I could receive no greater gift than serving your sons, your family, and the mission of Sarah. Thank you, and go Padre.